Good day, students. I'm here to take you through ACT 302, Cost Accounting 2, Study Section 8, Capital Budgeting. Learning has gone for Study Section 8. Uh, for students, you should be able to uh, define planning and budgeting as well as capital budgeting. You should be able to determine the MPV of project. You should be able to calculate the internal rate of return of project. Should be to determine the payback period of capital project. Should be to estimate the accounting rate of return of capital uh, project. What is capital budgeting? Uh, capital budgeting, which is also or can be called investment appraisal, is the planning process used to determine which of an organization's long-term investment, such as new machinery, replacement machinery, new plant, new product, and research development. Projects are worth pursuing. It's also budget for major capital investment for expenditure. We are talking about method of capital budgeting. The method could uh, be uh, from many former methods are used, uh, and we have a net present value. We have internal rate of return. We have peak back period. We have accounting rate of return. We have a uh, profitability index. We have equivalent annuity. Uh, we have real option analysis as far as this uh, uh, cost is concerned. Uh, from the next pres uh, present value, which we refer to as MPV, uh, you can see the formula we are having the solution of uh, uh, the rate, and we are having uh, CF to be the cash flow at the time, and we have R the cost of capital. Then we have the decision rules for that uh, net uh, present value, which uh, we have uh, if the MPV is positive, that is, we accept the project. And if the MPV is negative, we are rejecting the project. Advantages of MPV. MPV gives importance to the time value of money. That is, it's considered a uh, time value for money. Like when we are talking about uh, opportunity cost, of course. So uh, it's a it's a modern method because it it it, it indicates the discount factor for every of the capital that being employed in that uh, project. So uh, second one, uh, calculating of MPV, we said both after cash flow and before cash flow over the lifespan of that project are also considered. The MPV is also advantage in terms of profitability and risk of the project as giving a high priority. MPV helps in maximizing the firm's value, uh, uh, that is uh, the business value of that uh, organization. Some of the disadvantages, of course, uh, MPV is difficult to use. MPV is difficult to calculate an appropriate discount rate. MPV cannot give accurate decision if the amount of investment of majority, uh, um, I mean, the mutually exclusive projects are not equal. MPV may not give correct decision when the projects are of unequal like. We want to talk about uh, material variances, which will be talking about material cost variance, as we have discussed earlier in uh, the previous uh, uh, slide. We are saying that um, it is different between the standard cost of direct material specified for output achieved and the actual cost of direct material use. So the standard cost of materials is computed by multiplying the standard price with the standard quality for actual output and the actual cost is computed by multiplying the actual price with actual quantity. So material cost variance is equal to standard cost of material such minus actual cost of material used or you can put it in a formulation way by saying that the mcv is cost to standard cost of actual output minus actual cost or you can have it in a in a in, a, in another format by giving a specification or by representing it with an alphabet that we are saying that sq that should be uh, uh, standard quantity we multiply with xp which is a standard price of course minus a uh, uh, AQ, which is actual quantity, multiplied by actual price, which is for AP. We can have it. Uh, the, let's look at some examples that we have here. Mm, let's, the example says that consider capital budgeting project A and B, which yield the following cash flow over their five years' life. So the cost of capital for the project is 10%. That is, we have we are, we are given the rate, which is 10%, and we have the year, which we are, we are considering from the inception of that year zero year to the fifth year so what we are saying that the outlay which we refer to as initial capital must start from the zero year and 
the order's inflow then follows from the first year to the fifth year. So from the formula now for project A, to calculate the net present value, which we are saying that uh, we're having the cash flow of project A to be minus 1,000, uh, plus we are considering the whole inflow for the five years. And that's why we're having 500 over 1 plus with the rates we have been giving that 10%, then we have the power of 1 to the power of 5. And at the end of the day, you are having 134,008. You can do that on your own. For the second project, of course, the same method is being applied. And uh, if you applied it correctly with what we are having on the slide, uh, I'm assuring you, you are going to have 114,000.31. So that means for the consideration of the both projects, you can see that uh, project A and B are independent projects. They, they do not have mutual, uh, uh, they are mutually exclusive to each other. So we are saying that um, the only, uh, on the other hand, if they are mutually exclusive project, then project A should be chosen since it has the largest MPV. You can compare the result of the project A to project B as we are having it here that we are having 134,000.8 and uh, for project B we are having 114.31. For internal rate of return, that is, uh, we have IR, uh, the internal rate of return is defined as a discount that gives a net present value (MPV) of zero. So it's a common use to measure of investment efficiency. So we have the advantages and disadvantages of this internal rate of return. One of the advantages is that it considers the time value of money. It is easy to use. It does not require hodl rate or require rate of return. And of course, the disadvantages of IRR is that it ignores economic of scale. A empirical implicit assumption of your investment rate means of positive and negative uh, future cash flow. We have payback period, which is also from the aspect of uh, capital budgeting because we're having the two wing for which the, those ones that are not discount and those ones that are for discount. So we know payback period are the categories of uh, 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 non discount. Uh, uh, investment. So we are saying payback period in capital budgeting refer to the period of time required for the return of an investment to repay the sum of the original investment. And we have account rate of return, which we refer to as ARR. The ARR method can also uh, call the return on capital employed, which is popular known as ROSI, or the return on investment ROI method of appraising the capital budget is to estimate the account rate of return that the project should yield capital uh, budgeting from the definition of payback period what we are saying is that the last the last year with a negative non controlling uh, uh, our ncf plus absolute value of ncf in that year then we are having total cash flow in the following year and uh, the interpretation is that you will, will be looking at the point where we are able to pay back that uh, money because it has been exercised that a specific amount of money will be paid for a particular period of year. So that's what we are really saying about payback period uh, from this point. And uh, if you look at it deeply, we are saying that um, we are talking about accounting rate of return ARR which is called to average accounting profit or income over average investment. How do we calculate this? Or how do we interpret ARR? We are saying that average accounting profit is the arithmetic means of accounting income expected to be earned during each year of the project lifetime. Average investment will be calculated as the sum of uh, be beginning and end uh, book value of the project divided by two. That is another variation of ARR formula could be used. So for the for the decision rule for that ARR, accept the project only if ARR is equal to what or greater than the required account rate of return. In case of mutually exclusive project, accept one with highest ARR. For example, if management wants an investment to have an ARR of 15% and calculated ARR is what is 20%, then the project should be what accepted. The advantage of uh, ARR. Like payback period, you know, 
Uh, this method of investment and is easy to calculate. It recognizes the profitability factor of investment. So the disadvantage of ARR is that it does not take account of the timing of profit from one investment. It implicitly assumes stable cash received over time and it takes no account of length of the project. It ignores time value of, uh, of money. I think we have come to the end of this uh, uh, study section eight. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, see you in the, in the next slide.